Welcome everyone. Another episode of the Turning Point. We went live one hour earlier today, so I hope we catch up with everyone. How are you doing today, gentlemen? Bersan and David, we don't have Vandal today, unfortunately. He will join next week. Yep. How are you guys doing today? Yep, we're doing good. Very good. Very good. Fantastic. Thank you very much. A lot to talk about. Yep, a lot. As always, right? So you want to get started, Versan? Which topic uh, we should cover first? Yeah, I know I was sending you guys this in the message. We have to talk about the Cloward Piven strategy. That's something I'm going to dive into. So just give me a moment here. Um, but I want to thank our audience, you know, for all the unwavering support on the channel. Uh, there's a lot to unpack. It's clear that right now, I think we're all being bombarded with relentless narratives. And each narrative seems to be more overwhelming than the previous one. So we've been talking about a lot of these topics for a long time. Everything from digital assets like XRP to the broader social and economic and political undercurrents that are shaping the world today. So what is the Cloud Piven strategy? The Cloud Piven strategy, I get this question all the time. What we're witnessing is really a slow motion collapse of society and the monetary system. So this isn't really some sudden shock. It's the gradual erosion of privacy, freedom, uh, financial control. And this is something Andy Schechtman and many of us have discussed over and over again. It's little here, little there until it all comes crashing down at once. And make no mistake, this isn't speculation. There are global bodies out there like the World Health Organization, the United Nations, and the World Economic Forum that have been openly discussing these dynamics for a very long time. Whether the footage is public or not, it really doesn't matter. So what we're seeing in the US really is directly the Cloward Piven strategy in action. It's a deliberate breakdown of trust between governments and its citizens. It's designed to divide us at every entry level Divide and conquer strategy is the playbook with layers that are so intricate that typically the average person out there is trapped in a web of misinformation, misdirection, and just sheer confusion. And that's what we're living through. So it's not just one thing. It's you got the pharmaceutical industry hitting us at one side, the financial system from another, a fractured political infrastructure that further lies and in ties into the broader open border issues and all the other things that you see happening. What I'm trying to say, it's all interconnected, and more importantly, it's all by design. <clears throat> and what's really striking is that everyone is being exposed right now before our eyes. Um, many people in this space do call this a great awakening, but I think this is far from a great awakening. It's more of a late awakening and a very late reckoning. So we're at a turning point in history where every crisis does present an opportunity now for those in power to kind of swoop in with the so-called solutions. And that's exactly how they're orchestrating this, whether it be political reforms or technological controls, which we see that are accelerating for sure. So even if Trump does return, I do need to push this out there is that there is going to be pushback against this. And we're already seeing this power plays are going to continue to be unabated. Basically, it's not going to make a difference. And in my opinion, Elon Musk is really at the center of this convergence, playing a very key role that very few people seem to understand. His work with Neuralink and the saturation of our skies with satellites, all of this is not just about innovation, it's about accelerating the merger of humanity and technology. That aligns also perfectly with the very narratives and agendas promoted by the World Economic Forum and the UN. So um, people do need to wake up to the fact that these so-called saviors in the tech and political uh, environment, they're not here to save you. Um, the true light is within each and every one of us. It's not in the hands of billionaires or politicians. And I think until society really shakes off this addiction to um, uh, consumerism and this ego-driven uh, narrative, I think the materialistic world is really fueling the selfishness and the greed. Um, and that's why I think nothing is going to change, really. The real battle is within each and every one of us in ourselves. And until that's faced, we're just going to keep being passengers on a train that is really headed for a cliff. And I have videos, guys, that I wanted to share one with the audience here to show them exactly how serious this is. Um, and a lot of the stuff, like I said, has been discussed in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and play one clip, and then I'll let you guys uh, fill in the blanks. Give me one second, guys. I'm sorry. Bear with me. Here we go. <clears throat> 
try to have these things ready, but all right, here we go. So. Course is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty, piece by piece and step by step to various international organizations of which the United Nations is the outstanding, but far from the only example. Uh, here are the aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two, higher and then much higher taxes. Three, an increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency. Five, government controls of prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many faceted drive afoot to have our state lines eventually be no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. And that's just a few guys. This video, the actual footage of this, and I have it, goes for over an hour where other speakers come out and they talk about the same control systems that have been infiltrating the United States and governments all over the world, economic hitmen. There's a book about this where they are engineering all of this and they're creating the divide in subcategories. So people are focused on one narrative that seems to earn your trust. And I'm not saying that it's the, le you know, there is a lesser evil for sure, but that's how they're selling it to the people. So I, I have to em emphasize this because as this awakening is happening, I see more people being deceived. There's a guy on Twitter, last thing I'll put out there, yesterday on X. He took a picture of an Israeli uh, girl shooting a picture of what seems to be Jesus Christ, a picture of it. And he was saying this is like what Muslims are doing. He got over 11 million views on that tweet. Let me tell you something. That picture is not a Muslim girl. It's an Israeli citizen, by the way. And that was falsely perpetuated to over 11 million people out there who are now focusing and redirecting anger and hatred towards something else. And guys, we're going to talk about digital assets and money and all of that. But just the sheer nonsense of what's being put out there is something that is understated. People need to understand that. So you have to critically think for yourself and don't allow them to stir up more division and hatred within your heart, because that's the ultimate goal. If they can divide us, that's how they're going to win. We, um, our enemies are not overseas. They're not in these poor nations around the world and these countries out there. It, they are the central bankers. So that's enough. Right. You guys can uh, fill in the blanks here. I think I've said enough. So thank you guys. <clears throat> Thanks for sharing, Versan. I think the videos played very smoothly. And I want to start asking you, David, what do you think of that? Well, you know, I do believe exactly what uh, Versan is saying there, that this is an orchestrated, um, constructed collapse with an end goal of uh, basically and I know it sounds ominous, but global domination by the central banks, because when you think the United States, it took over 100 years for the United States to get one trillion in debt, the very first trillion. Well, now you're adding one trillion dollars to the debt every 100 days. I mean, that is the rapid pace of absolute collapse. Now, who is the issuer of the currency? Well, it's the Federal Reserve, central bank. And it's not that they want to become the lender of first choice. They want to be the lender of only choice and the borrower of only choice in this respect. 
And that is what a consolidation of power looks like. And it's the decimation of a culture, of a society, of, you know, individual thinking. We used to live in an age where we could debate. I remember very clearly as a young person being able to debate on very, very kind of like divided topics and still not walk away hating the other person because they shared a different opinion. Where now it's it's not the difference of opinion that's accentuated, but the hatred about the difference of opinion. And that to me is when people start to give up their critical thinking. I've shared this many times on you know my own program, on my own uh, coffee chats and things like that, is that this is one of the things that I do believe that there is an absolute agenda to take away from people is where they, you know, have that independent thought. And a lot of it can be easily seen. You strike up a conversation on any political topic or any social topic right now. Most people, when it comes to their apologetic for what they believe and why they believe it, you listen to them talk. And within the very first five minutes, you're hearing the absolute verbatim narrative that has been fed to them by the fifth estate and 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 we know that with social media there is a big affirmation boost so if you agree with a particular line that seems to be the line to go boy the affirmation that you get personally it's it's truly a, it's almost a drug and so many people are buying into this kind of thinking this kind of philosophy and there is an absolute danger in that. And then they look at folks like us that are shining the light on this and saying, hey, you may want to ask some questions. And the questions to ask are not the what, but the whys. Why? What's the rationale behind this? What is the purpose? And on and on. When they, what they want to do is to make us look like, hey, we're the conspiracy series theorist and you know we're the ones uh creating dissent so much so that they'll incarcerate people for retweeting tweets if you can imagine but the truth of the matter is how right have a lot of these conspiracy theorists been thus far well they've been fairly right about a lot of things that have gone down and when you see it and you start pulling back the curtain and seeing who the wizard of oz is pulling the strings and this and that you can fairly clearly see that this is on the road to a particular end. And, and a lot of that is, you know, a societal collapse into a new formation of a different kind of society. I recently, I uh, was reading an article and the article was talking about how a high level uh, social professor at Berkeley was uh, putting out there fairly. And there's a lot of support for this that a rewriting of the U S constitution that it is a constitution that doesn't apply in today's world. And what are we talking about when you're talking about, you know, the very first amendment? Well, you know, having the freedom of the press, having the freedom of speech, they want to curtail that in a big way. And we're seeing that happening in Canada and we're seeing it happen over in the UK where legislation has been thrown out there to curtail free speech. Now there's a lot of opinions that I would absolutely disagree with hands down that I think are almost vile but to strip citizens of their right to express. Remember, this is not a privilege. Freedom of speech is a fundamental right. That, you know, once you start stripping that away, what do you start to do? Well, you absolutely control the narrative. And when you start punishing people, either socially or even with a lawfare, if you will, for expressing an opinion that is disagreed with, with the you know, the, the opinion of the state or whatever, um, you're talking about a very quick demise of liberty and individual freedom. And to me, that is a very dangerous, slippery slope. And of course, they're going to do it monetarily. And yep. that is the biggest control. It does not matter who the presidents are, who the rulers are, who all this. It's these individuals that control the monetary systems of the world that really have the control and power. And that is always the way it has been and they are absolutely marshalling us towards a different kind of world and i guess it's up to us whether or not we're going to fall in line or if we're going to stand up and be counted as saying hey listen i think we need to take another look here that's how i view that nicely said and there is an awakening i understand that there are people that are connecting to their self again their higher self god uh, jesus christ um, and whatever religion you are, you're connecting with yourself again because you see what's happening. The question I have, and I've actually figured this shit out for myself, 
and it wasn't easy, is that they're intentionally exposing their own people to earn your trust to roll out something else within that. So like I said in the beginning, the real awakening is within. And when you realize that, everything else is just bullshit. That's all. It's the truth. And uh, just to touch on what somebody said there about XDC, I just want to give them the answer right now. XDC is taking over a $19 trillion market. So um, that's a very big plus. <laughs> Sorry to jump into that. But uh, Edo, what do you think? As far as the Cloud Divin strategy. Yeah so, first, yeah, so first don't worry, everyone. We're going to talk digital assets more by the end of this uh, podcast. But touching on what you both said first, nicely said, let me come a bit more closer so there will be no complaints about my mic. So as I Good see, <laughs> central banks are the head of the snake. I always say this sentence because I think we have to understand that politicians, right now there is a spectrum, right? So just imagine a spectrum right here where you have the two sides and the Democrats and Republicans, and they are discussing ideas on this side of the spectrum. Meaning that everything they are discussing is because the powers of being, in other words, policymakers, central banks, I see the US, especially the US as a private corporation run by central banks uh, rather than a democracy or actually a capitalist nation. So everything is being discussed here, but guess what? 90% of the topics they are discussing here, even though, yes, there is the less evil uh, as Versan described uh, previously. However, it's most irrelevant things. Everything they are discussing to the masses uh, is, is not going to make any difference from a society perspective or economical perspective because Regardless of who is getting in power, uh, the globalists are getting their agenda ahead. So even though one side is less evil, even though, let's say, Donald Trump wins, I don't think the global agenda is going to stop, right? Uh, they have mm -hmm. been planning this for generations. And everything started at, in my opinion, at the university levels. Uh, I used to call, uh, I just see some image here. It's okay. So I used no, to call okay. the in, uh, universities uh, indoctrination camps. And I think that makes a lot of sense because the, the, the operation began at the universities, at the young generations. So what we, we are seeing right now is a reflection of decades of brainwashing at the universities. In other words, they have demoralized nations uh, look at the United States, for instance. Okay, I have been there once, but I felt in a movie. Honestly, uh, I will not. I don't say this to offend Americans, but that was a completely different reality. And I see that the demoralization process in the United States has been extremely successful uh, to a, to a level that I don't think even uh, the powers in control could actually predict. They would they would be so successful looking back. Uh, 20 years ago. I would say that the demoralization process in the United States and also in many other Western Western nations have reached the final levels. I mean, we, we are beyond what they expected it. So when you have a demoralized society, it's a society that no longer can uh, recognize what is correct, what is not correct. You can present someone who has been demoralized with facts and this person, this individual is incapable to recognize uh, it, what is actually uh, truth and what is actually uh, the counterfeit for the truth being. So just look what happened in 2019 and 2020. And this all comes uh, for you to understand the censorship. I cannot even mention certain words. I'm live, is, live streaming this to certain platforms that I can't really talk freely, but... I think we're evolving to learn how to bypass uh, this censorship. So just see what they did in 2019. And I think everyone knows what they did in 2019. And we could bring, I mean, we as say the, the people who stood against the official narrative, right? And you could bring as many facts as you wish. And you could bring numbers, logic. I think from the most basic understanding that even a, a child 
of five years old should comprehend, but you would present this to a mass of individuals who were 100% demoralized. And for these people, the truth didn't matter. They have chosen to follow an agenda. They have chosen to trust blindly governments. Many of them regret now, but many of them are still incapable to recognizing what the governments were capable of doing. They orchestrated a plan at a global level. They colluded central banks. Every yes. central bank in the world, every government in the world followed the same agenda. doesn't matter if it's Russia, the United States, Israel, and you are telling me that you are worried if it's going to be Trump or Kamala Harris uh, that's going to win the U.S. elections. I think we are heading towards the same direction. There is a supranational agenda. And the title of this video describes it all. They want a mass of individuals who rely on the government, hence why they have targeted the families. You know, families are actually disappearing, the family structure as we know. And that's the ultimate defense of us as individuals against tyrants. Because if you don't have anyone on your fam family where you can rely, either it is psychologically or or from an economical perspective, your only choice is to go to the government. But the problem is that nothing comes for free, right? The government might provide you some sort of support and you can see that as perhaps the universal income that they are working on. But in order to get that, I I'm not gonna call that benefit, but in order to get access to these uh, programs by the government, which they want the citizens to rely on that, you're going to have to give something in return. And usually the price is pretty high because you need to give up on your freedom, on your most basic uh, freedom. And that's why uh, I think they did this brainwashing back there in 2019, 2020, mm -hmm. to a certain degree that today you can see the reflection on society because it's not even necessary the government to come and try to censor you they have all of these infiltrated agents, which are just people, but that have been brainwashed. And whenever you present them with facts, they will rage against you. They will try to cancel you. They will actually unite and uh, try to censor the spreadness of ideas and facts. And I think we are really heading towards a very dangerous scenario. And I especially now we have AI that's going to speed up the process. And you're going to have a whole... Um, a, a substantial percentage of the world's population that's not going to have a job. That's the reality, right? You have yep. AI that's going to take, I, I will not say which percentage because I really don't have the answer, but I do believe a substantial fraction of the jobs are said to be lost. And I ask myself the question, what these people are going to do for a living, right? With everything becoming more expansive. I mean, the average Joe cannot even afford to own its own property, its own piece of real estate, which in the in the past, let's look back to the previous generations, that was, I think, most, most men that had a job and could provide for their families, they could afford a home. And today is quite the opposite, right? Is is the the ones that are able to purchase its own properties are the exception of the rule. And I think it's gonna be a very interesting year in the, the next. I think things are speeding up, as I said, with gold making new all-time highs. It really signals that we are close to a shift in trans to a big transformation. Uh, and I think it's time for us, especially the ones that are aware of this transformation. I think it's beautiful times because we're going to be able to capitalize on this transformation. And that's why, where digital assets play such an important role, as well as precious metals such as gold and silver. So uh, you want to play this video, Versan, or add something to what I said? Yeah, I'm going to play uh, this video. This is uh, Catherine Austin Fitz. I'm sure many people who do their research know who she is. Uh, one, I'm going to let her say what she needs to say, and this video is really important, actually, and I have a bunch of clips that tie into narrative. So um, let's listen to this. Okay, guys, so that's just uh, to touch on 
how important it is to acknowledge that all these things are being played from different scenarios, how I mentioned that they're hitting us from this side and this side and bombarding us with constant narratives and propaganda. This is designed to keep you distracted on the underlying issues at hand. And that's where we can shift our focus onto the central banks, who are, what they're orchestrating behind the scenes. Now, while right. people are distracted with the endless political chaos and all these narratives that she just mentioned that are spun by the very same people controlling the financial system, the central banks are quietly setting up a trap right now. They're gearing up for another round of quantitative easing. They're going to print more money. This is why we're going to see a maybe a euphoric bull run in the short term. It's going to further devalue the currency. They're going to buy up the debt that individuals and institutions can no longer afford. That's the further of the consolidation. They're buying up everything that you can't afford to hold on to because um, you, you have to meet the you know inflation and that's going to continue. So they're trying to strip you of ownership, shrink your freedom, control every asset class that's in the monetary system. And they're going to push us towards a future where people own nothing tangible. So this is where we'll shift into digital money. This is not just about money. It's about setting up a global framework for tokenized tokenization and digital infrastructure where artificial intelligence will certainly dominate the job market. The narrative that they're pushing is that your digital assets will be your only stake in the future. This is why it's important to own physical assets like gold and silver, something we'll touch on in a moment here. But there's a catch to all of this. These assets are going to be heavily controlled. Anything that's digital is going to be controlled. This is even what Martin Armstrong told me in detail off record. Every move that you make with your money will still be monitored. Every transaction will still be scrutinized. So I'm trying to get Catherine Austin Fitz on the show because her experience with Goldman Sachs, her deep knowledge about these shifts is actually crucial to understanding how this trap is being set. I think many of us here know. Um, but for years, central banks now have been downplaying inflation. In 2021 and 2022, they said it was transitory all while lying to the public because the real numbers have skyrocketed. Now they can't hide that anymore. And what terrifies them the most is really the job market's transformation. I recently tweeted about this the other day, about the real data, not the sanitized numbers that they want you to see, the deception. Unemployment has spiked to the levels that we haven't seen since 2009, shortly after the 2008 financial crisis. This time it's different. It's because AI isn't just taking low skill income jobs that people say, they don't want to do it. AI is coming in to take those jobs that people don't want. It's actually creeping into every industry, including professionals like lawyers that were once thought immune. So they're not immune anymore. Um, district attorneys. These things are going to take place and it's only going to speed up because, um, you know, it's not about efficiency, guys. It's about control. So just don't be fooled by the AI narrative that's replacing the jobs that people don't want. That's bullshit. That's pure nonsense. Yeah. The real agenda is not about using AI to control global resources. I'm sorry. It is about using AI to control global resources. The rest, that's mm -hmm. why there's a depopulation agenda. And that's why the theories keep surfacing. They don't want to manage the masses anymore. And I read about these plans in the United Nations playbook over seven years ago when I tried to warn my mother. She just brushed it off as being paranoid. She thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. But look around now. The writing is on the wall. So last thing, mm -hmm. guys, I'm sorry. I know you have to go soon. Um, as central banks flood the market with more printed money, they're strategically going to buy up all the debt and assets, pumping to select markets where letting others sink. And that's pretty much how these markets work. So make no mistake, this isn't random. We know from the data in our community, all of us together, our insight that they're leveraging some financial technologies for stability, particularly specific cryptos. And that's going to bridge the gap between the legacy financial system and this new digital economy. So key assets within this space are going to be propped up, aligning with the direction that all of this shit is heading to anyways. And XRP obviously plays a key role in this transformation. And the linchpin to the shift is pretty much that Ripple's protocol is just a tool. It's the rule book that is setting the stage for the entire financial architecture of tomorrow. So um, let you speak, and then I'm going to play a video to support what I just said there. Well, what I want to add to that is something that um, we know is coming on a global level. And I'm actually going to show a little uh, screenshot of this, if I may. Yeah, um, yeah, let me hold this down. Sorry. Yep, no problem. My apologies, everyone. Yeah, there yeah. we go. There we go. And I just want to share my screen here and what I'm trying to think. Uh, okay, I want to share this right here because this is a big deal. 
What we're looking at here is what digital IDs, and look who it is. This is the World Economic Forum. Now, this is from 2019. You don't think they have an agenda? Look at this down here. When it talks about, and and you're looking at, um, you know, they're saying approximately 1 billion people in the world don't have a way to formally prove their identity. Well, my question is, why do they need to in a lot of ways? You know, but what they're saying is, oh, well, this is the narrative. People are being left behind and they're not having part of this ec economy and everything that's going on. But the reality is they want to bring people under this entire umbrella. And if you want to know what digital IDs are going to entail, they are going to entail everything that you and I do from you're going to have to have a digital ID to get Internet access. You're going to have to have a digital ID to engage in e-commerce. You're going to have to have a digital ID to, for medical. You're going to have to have a digital ID for your education. No matter what, digital IDs are going to be a compulsory issue in society. And the one thing that they put down here, and this is quite interesting, you know, it's talking about it meets both government and private sector standards for initial re initial registration and subsequent acceptance for multiple important civic and economic uses, basically everything that you and I do. Unique. An individual has only one identity within a scheme, and every scheme identity corresponds to only one individual. They will know everything that you do everyone you interact with, everything that is in right down to where you buy a bag of potato chips. Established with individual consents, it says individuals knowingly register and use digital IDs. Well, this comes down to the whole idea is, you know, they said that, oh, well, this whole situation was mandatory, except that in the country that I moved from to this country, and that was Canada and the United States, when you were there, if you did not have this going on, well, guess what? You didn't take a bus because you didn't you didn't take the train. You didn't take a plane. You weren't even allowed to go on public transportation. So if you had no vehicle to get to and from work, guess what? You weren't going to work. And, and guess what? You may not have had a job and on and on. Yeah, it's knowingly and it's, oh, it's voluntary. But the squeeze that's put on people to make this voluntary is really a way of, uh, you know, coercion and, and making it compulsory with knowledge over what personal data will be captured and how, oh, you'll have knowledge about what's being captured because it'll be everything and how it will be used. Oh, for sure. But will you have jurisdiction over it? No, you won't. Protects Uber privacies and conters, conters, ensures control over personal data. It does not. When they say built-in safeguards ensure privacy and security, well, it's with the trusted providers, right? This is where, you know, um, all of like, it's it's like all of our tax information is custodied by the government. Yes, it's private in the sense that the government's not supposed to, but do they know? Of course they know. And this is where the narrative that's being sold, you know, to kind of you know, put this new system out there, and I'll just stop uh, sharing that right now, to put this new, new system out there, of course, is, oh, the benefits, oh, the benefits, but what you don't realize is what you're acquiescing, you're acquiescing your individuality, you're acquiescing your, your autonomy, your privacy, and, and look, a lot of people say, oh, well, why, if you don't have anything to keep secret, why do you need privacy? That has got to be the most ridiculous argument that I have ever heard about that because there's there's a difference between trying to hide something nefarious between having a private life. That is something that's a God-given right for you and I to have our private thoughts, feelings, opinions, attitude, relationships, on and on. Is it not? They don't want that anymore. Why? Because they can't control the narrative. Now, I forget the gentleman's name, but it's uh, Klaus Schwab's uh, second in command, Harari Har 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 or Harari. You've all. Yeah. You've all Harari, something this, like that. This yeah. guy has literally come out and in writing basically has said, look, we, you know, back in the days when, you know, the Soviets were in Russia or the Nazis and all this and that. Well, they couldn't really tell who was actually for it because people could stand up on the outside and say, oh, yes, yes, yes. But on the inside, they're not. And he was talking about how they could literally read someone's biological chemical reactions to various information and know whether or not someone is genuinely acquiescing to a, a supposition or a policy. How um, Orwellian does it have to get before we wake up and realize there's an agenda here? And yes, blockchain ultimately will be utilized as part of that agenda because that is exactly the whole purpose 
of what's going on. And like that video you just showed, they don't want us connecting the dots. And when we do connect the dots, well, we're conspiracy theorists and this and this and this. And, and, and that is a process of delegitimizing. Remember all of the medical experts, in fact, even the individual who invented the protocol for mRNA saying that it was not good for human use. Well, that was literally, you know, what happened to him? Silenced, you know, this kind of stuff is going on. And until people as a, as a broader society really wake up and think, okay, what am I forfeiting here to have this big benefit? For me, it, the cost is too great. When you think about it, universal basic income, that is going to be sold big scale when we have this major financial collapse that I believe most economists are expecting that will be greater than the Great Depression on a global level. Universal basic income is going to sound like the, the answer that they need, but it's it's the pathway to slavery in a lot of ways. And But that's what a lot of people are trying to... I heard someone's comments in here that I read, oh, well, they're a a British citizen and, um, you know, they're, you know, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, whatever. And, you know, they agreed with what the government did because they're anti-racist. Well, I'm an anti-racist. I'm not a racist, you know, a red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. That's a song I grew up in Sunday school singing. And so I don't have that attitude, but I'll tell you what, the moment you start to uh, punish and imprison people for mm -hmm. the expression of a feeling frustration, anger, whatever, not a verbal threat, not out to go hurt anybody. The moment you do that, you have given up so much of your liberty. You do not even realize th the check has not even been, you've just given them a blank check. And that's how I kind of view it. And in that, in that capacity, I really do pray for people. I pray that, you know, we wake up in, in reality and realize, okay, is this the society that we think is going to bring about, you know, the unification of mankind. Absolutely no way. You know, when you think about that, and they've tried these experiments in, you know, other cultures, uh, other societies, and it's put more people in the grave than any other thing. Really, it has. Point. And, and this is something to really consider. And yes, we are going to move into this future. Now, you know, almost from a biblical perspective, this has been, you know, prophetic. I mean, we're almost seeing things happen prophetically and so now i do have to kind of jet and things like that but i want to throw that out there don't forfeit your critical thinking if anything keep it going you don't have to agree with every opinion certainly don't have to agree with our opinions to be sure but i would say the mo do not fall into this trap that because this group holds a different opinion than you do on this issue or that issue that they need to be silenced and oh there's such a danger no what danger is is when you kill that you know, opposition, you kill that kind of thinking because without it, you know, we are just being so like lambs led to a slaughter. I really do believe that. And that's why I support in a peaceful way, getting out there and communicating and demonstrating and, you know, having those open debates about differences of opinion, points of view and stuff like that. We don't want to kill that uh, in my estimation anyway, but guys, I, I'm going to let you, uh, Versan and uh, Edo, take it off from here. I have to kind of jet, but you know, valuable conversation to be sure, guys. Of course, man. It was a pleasure. And thanks for coming on on short notice. But yep. just to finalize what you said, you know, a, a person's status in the natural world, in the order of things, is really determined by the quality of his or her thinking. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, Absolutely. David. Well, okay, guys. Pleasure, man. Take Thank care. You, yep. And I'll see you on the Good 20th. Safety. Yes. Yes, you bet. You bet, okay. guys. Okay. Take care, guys. Thank you, David. <clears throat> All right. Let's continue. Um, very insightful, good information. I want to play this clip uh, just to give you an idea of what we're like up against, and we can carry on from here. Edo, did you want to put some final thoughts in before I start the video on what David said? Yeah, just very quickly, I think he was very precise and he communicated very well. However, uh, it's just look what's happening, what's already happened in China. If you want to know what they are planning for the Western countries, you have to look for the Chinese model of control over the population and pretty much you're going to understand uh, what is the final outcome for this global agenda. And I also recommend everyone to watch a series uh, which is called Black Mirror. And I don't call it a series, I call it a documentary because 
that's pretty much predict predictive programming. I think that's how it's called because it just putting in plain sight uh, exactly what the world is going to look a few years from now. Don't make mistakes thinking that is fiction. Uh, that's how they actually operate. So, Versen, you can please uh, play your video and then we can yeah. jump on the next topics. Yeah, and just uh, um, touch on some comment here. China is a Ripple partner. That is a fact. Um, in fact, there's more information that's being revealed gradually that it's very possible that Project Embridge was built upon the XRP ledger. Um, what else? China is actually in the book of the great narrative written by Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum talking about how they would eventually give the keys to China because their society is already um, disciplined as far as, um, you know, there's a, already a totalitarian state on the Chinese people. Um, so they would just pretty much give the keys to them to run the new system. And if there's, there's another movie with uh, Bruce Willis and, you know, subtext is in a lot of these films, guys in Hollywood, they put this shit out there years ago. And, um, uh, one of the actors from Dumb and Dumber, uh, uh, Bruce Willis was in this movie. I can't remember what it was called, but it's basically where this guy goes back and forth in time. And, uh, it turns out in the future, they talk about how China pretty much is running the world and, uh, you know, uh, what else? Silver is the ultimate currency for the population, the masses. And uh, just to touch on silver too, that silver, the demand is just getting started, guys. There's going to be a, a certain uptrend in silver because as the digitization of everything is accelerating and uh, there are new batteries being built that require silver for um, these electric cars, this green agenda, you're going to see a rise in uh, industrial use for silver. Um, of course, gold, I think all metals are extremely undervalued and, you know, that hasn't been recognized yet. So it's still your opportunity to get in early. Um, I'm going to play this real quick and we'll go from there. I mean, you guys, uh, I wish I could put, I'm going to put the link to this actual video in the description later on, but it's so important that you do watch the whole thing. There are some parts that she talks about that I didn't want to put up here because, you know, YouTube could really censor this video. Um, but she said one of the most key players in all of this, and I don't want to use his name because we're actually streaming on one of his accounts. Um, is an expert in merging uh, the brain with the technology. And the one who's really running the show, a lot of it, is the one putting up all the satellites. So I think you guys know who that is. Um, I just, you know, it's just crazy, guys. It really is. And this is not conspiracy. This is not a joke. Everything is now being revealed to the public gradually. So I guess we can shift the conversation now to digital assets. That's what everyone wants to talk about for sure. Um, but it's important that we did cover these topics because there are so many contributing factors into all these transformations we see, despite the fact that they want you to be looking at one thing and not the other. It's important for us to try to bridge the gap so people can understand the bigger narrative at play here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what happened with Chris Larson his endorsement of Kamala Harris. I saw a lot of bad information come out. I'm going to let you go first on this, Edo, and I'll go after you. Well, that may, might be tied with a lot that we spoke in the beginning of this live streaming, as everything is about to divide us, right? Now they're dividing XRP holders within. I honestly see people that were selling their XRPs because... Chris Larson supports Kamala Harris. And honestly, that ain't a surprise, right? Just go to the World Economic Forum website and you're going to search there for Chris Larson. You're going to find his there on the on a board member of the World Economic Forum. You're also going to find Brett Garlinghouse. Well, it's not breaking news, right? So there is this agenda that's going to move on and you have to understand the agenda moves with or without you. So the fact that 
you're gonna decide to sell your XRP because Chris Larson is supporting Kamala Harris, first understand that the technology is neutral, and so it is the XRP ledger. It doesn't have a political bias. So the fact that you are coming out and saying, I'm gonna sell my XRP because I don't want to support uh, Kamala Harris, I think that's idiotic. Sorry to call it as it is. It's like completely, True. makes absolutely no sense, right? And just just be practical, right? Uh, both sides are embracing Ripple's technology. It's not only about uh, Democrats or Republicans, but you look for a at a global scale, right? You have BRICS nations embracing Ripple's technology. Either it is through RippleNet, or if they directly using on-demand liquidity with XRP as a settlement uh, mechanism. So honestly, that's all noise. I'm not really paying a lot of attention to what Chris Larson is, whoever he is supporting on the U.S. elections. And I think that's all meant uh, to distract the XRP holders. How do you see that, Versan? God, I don't even know where to begin. <clears throat> First of all, uh, hopefully people can read this or screenshot it too. I'm going to be adding a few images here to show how the these two technologies also complement each other, XRP and XLM. Now, as far as Chris Larson's endorsement of Camilla Harris, First of all, I don't give a shit. It's a non-issue to touch on what you said. Ripple and XRP are very two separate entities. And I think many people still haven't figured that out. XRP itself, like you said, does not carry any political bias. It's simply a digital asset native to the XRP ledger. Ripple's focus is really building the infrastructure that leverages the XRP for the financial institutions. And that's a fundamental separation that needs to be embraced and that needs to be understood because many people in the space seem to be lost on a lot of the information out there. So it's baffling how basically people can conflate the actions of what Ripple is doing. And not, not to mention that Ripple also embraced John Deaton, who's one of the biggest advocates for XRP holders. So it's clear what's happening. They can easily play both sides. It doesn't matter to stay ahead. It's all about the narrative. It doesn't affect the core technology of its role in the financial system. And this is why I keep urging everybody, I don't know how many damn times I've said this, to zoom out, look at the bigger picture, not the distractions, not the narratives designed to mislead people and create situations where there are nuances upon nuances upon nuances. People love to look at nuances whether you know the narrative is the same or not it's like like what are your priorities right where is your energy directed xrp is still the heart of the new financial system it's the key of activating this digital transformation if you're holding the digital asset you still have the keys to the new system you have the keys to liquidity and all these distractions all this noise from the newcomers who are coming into the space who still don't see what uh, our community has been discussing for years and many others in this space, uh, notable figures out there, including Brad Kimes, right? And uh, DAI. And there are a lot of great people in the space who have really been putting out good information. So I encourage newcomers to go back and listen to some of the videos that have been put out in the past. Maybe they can get the general idea. So my advice is pretty much the same. Ignore the narratives, tune out to the sideshows, concentrate on what truly matters. And my friends who do call me, some of them are watching this right now. They call me on the phone about the latest news, the latest drama. That's what I call it. The real threat, ladies and gentlemen, isn't the politician that someone supports. It's the inflation. Inflation is going to be the silent killer that's going to force people to make it difficult, make difficult decisions. It's going to force you to sell off assets that you can't afford to hold on to, to meet the rising costs. It's really that simple. So the strategy is pretty much straightforward. Do do not pay attention to these um, uh, nuances, all right? And just do exactly what the one percenters are doing. The one percenters, they're um, stacking up cash, even though cash is for losers. I get that, okay? Um, for an emergency to buy things when they're cheaper, they're buying gold, they're um, uh, investing in key digital assets. So just work harder, earn more, reduce unnecessary spending, try to stay out of debt, and it's sad because most people in America, and I see this, I'm in the US, Edo. Most Americans are alive still because they rely on credit cards. That's how they get back. They have no savings to fall back on. So if you're a really serious investor, you need to change your mindset. You need to cut back on spending habits, not just to save money, but to protect yourself against the economic squeeze that is coming. Those are my thoughts.
It doesn't matter what Chris Larson says. I really don't care. Totally agree. And I did a uh, tweet about that. I mean, ultimately, if you decide to sell your assets because of political endorsements, in the end, you're going to only punish your own pockets, right? So there is no purpose. There is no reason to do so. And I think ultimately we have to focus on the rails of the new financial system. That's exactly what Ripple is building. And the agenda is just going to follow with or without uh, your investment. So focus on reducing your spends, as Versant said. I think everyone in this moment should learn to live with less so that you can save more and ultimately you can diversify your investments. As Versant said, as far as cash is for losers, but I think ultimately... You have to be well diversified in digital assets as well, precious metals. And if you can also uh, own some piece of real estate, I think that's also very important. I don't know about the markets in the United States, so I don't speak for the US, but if you are in Europe, I think owning real estate is also a great hedge against inflation as they keep devaluating the currencies. That's not only for the US dollar. I mean, it's a global agenda. And as the US dollar is getting devaluated, so it is the euro and so it is i see someone uh, commenting about poland so it is the slottish how is the polish currency and so it is uh, every single currency that i can think of is getting devaluated it's, it's a global process right mm -hmm. so ultimately the, the way you can protect yourself is by not ha having only uh, cash so i think ultimately if you have a basket of currencies digital assets that's going to protect you against inflation which, as Versant said, is number one enemy right now. Every time I go to the supermarket, I'm not sure if you guys are paying attention, but the numbers they are reporting are not correct. I mean, you just see the price of everything going up, and as the majority of the population is uh, not winning more cash, they just uh, not increasing the salaries is not compatible with inflation. So if you uh, let me know in the comments where you guys are and let me know if you think the, the prices are dropping because everyone that I can think of that I spoke uh, in the last month, they tell me the same thing. doesn't matter if they, they are in South America, if they are in Europe, if they are in Asia. I think that's a global problem. Uh, what do you have yeah. there on the screen, Versan? Well, while we're talking, I like to put this up there just so people can get more confidence in what they're investing in. This is an actual document that I do have from Ripple. It's about 20 something pages. And I got this document a long time ago. And this was, you know, just um, showing how the technology works, why it's being adopted by banks, uh, what its use cases are. Now, this specific page is about the regulations and the regula regulatory agencies that they are associated with. Obviously, you know the IMF guys, but look, even the Federal Reserve faster payments. Um, this document, I got it in 2020. I still have it in, you know, in my uh, applications here to share with people who, uh, when they book our, their sessions with us. But all this stuff is out in the open. So you see a lot of news now about, oh, the Federal Reserve um, is working with Ripple. They've been working with Ripple for a very long time. You see all the news about what happened in Japan recently. They've been putting that narrative out for a very long time. Nothing here is new. Um, just continue to focus on bringing more income to buy time before they squeeze you because they're trying to squeeze you. Um, something else I wanted to talk about is the stable coins. I put a good tweet about this. I encourage people to follow me on Twitter and of course, follow Edo and David and my brother. But um, there is a critical relationship between XRP and the stable coins that are being built on the XRP ledger. A lot of people think that, um, and I've seen this, critics are saying, hey, um, uh, real USD is going to knock out XRP. Well, that does not make sense. And we can clarify this with very basic logic and critical thinking, which is something that is becoming very rare these days, especially in these discussions. You, you have to understand that XRP is the native asset for Ripple's protocol. The protocol is the technology that pretty much sets the rules for the transactions to occur. It, what, its design is to bridge everything together to provide the liquidity necessary to settle those transactions. Now, a stable coin like real USD, right? Built on the XRP ledger, 
Now, whether it is, and that hasn't been revealed yet, whether the real USD is pegged to a debt-based devalued fiat shit currency like the dollar, okay? Or it can be pegged to something like hard assets or commodities like gold, which is very interesting because the actual documentation from the Bank of International Settlements reveals those who have done their research, it reveals in the Basel III requirements that there are going to be stable coins eventually launched from the uh, for the central bank's gold reserves. Now, I wonder, with all these narratives coming out now about stable coins being built on the XRP ledger, do you think the Bank of International Settlements is going to build their central bank gold reserve stable coins on the XRP ledger? Most likely. I really believe that's gonna that's how it's going to unfold. Interestingly, when Rick Rule came onto our show, he mentioned that it's interesting to hear it from you guys that on my own, I've seen in reports that they're interested in XRP. My point, though, is that any stable coins that are being built on the XRP ledger, on the infrastructure that it requires and depends on to have the liquidity, to um, be able to use the efficiency of the blockchain, it's going to rely on the very infrastructure it's built upon. So it directly links them to the XRP value that's not been recognized yet and their functionality. So, uh, I mean, it's really clear, you know, um, it's not very challenging to understand. Um, the, the, the real question that I have now is, is real USD going to be backed by the dollar? Because if you look at the definition of a stable coin, it has a peg to either a fiat currency or it has a peg to a hard asset, a commodity. I know long term, yes, there is a road back to a digital gold standard of some sort. Another document that I have here, I, I don't have the, I, I can't share the full document at this moment because I screenshotted the important part, but I want to share this with everybody. I'm um, sorry, guys. Give me one second. My apologies. Oh, shit. Okay. I, I slipped up this time. I have so many screenshots on here that are very important. And I feel like it really ties into the broader narrative, but it is the money flower. I posted this on X yesterday as well. Here we go. Sorry, guys. All right. My apologies. Okay. Here we go. Um, I think we're getting better at this. All right. So the money flower is a taxonomy of money. And if you look at this, even Lynette Zhang, she came on our show and she confirmed it, that the Bank of International Settlements has their private money flower, where they have select private cryptocurrencies that will be used. And they're going to have their commodity money. They're going to have their cash. They're going to have their local currencies, deposit currency accounts, settlement or reserve accounts, which is typically gold. Now you need a digital representation of that because we're in a digital economy. So the Basel III requirements have central banks to... Uh, have a certain amount of gold reserves in their portfolio and their balance sheets. Um, now I can see XRP being the uh, alternative that for the institutions that don't meet those uh, requirements. It's very possible. So there are multiple scenarios, but we we know this how it's going to unfold in some way, form, or fashion. Okay, um, I think I've said enough, guys. But yeah, I'll leave this here for everyone to view. What are your thoughts, Edo? Yeah, I also sometimes I ask myself the same question about a real stablecoin from Ripple. Uh, is it going to be backed by gold? Because ultimately, to back any sort of stablecoin only by the US dollar, I think on the long term that doesn't going to work well. Yeah. Because it's going to just be a repackage of the current system, especially with so many nations dumping, literally dumping the US dollar. I think hard assets are the way to go. And we had so many discussions about it. And I think ultimately uh, the future, as I see, it's a stable coins backed by a basket of assets. And that can also tie back to the Basel tree regulations. And more interesting, interestingly, I think that the central banks might end up holding a basket of commodities, which can also include XRP. And that's when uh, XRP is going to fulfill its purpose that ultimately, I, and I don't really know why, so less people are talking about it, which is literally uh, solve the problem of uh, Nostra Vostra account. So basically unlocking 
trillions of dollars in liquidity, which ultimately is the solution for the liquidity crisis. So just imagine every central bank in the world uh, holding an amount of XRP and also probably gold. I think it's not going to be only XRP or only gold. I think ultimately uh, it's going to be a basket of currencies. I think XRP is going to play a pivotal role, but I do think that we're going to have other assets as well included on this basket of currencies. It might be uh, XDC, XLM, even HBAR, which have a different technology. It's not really a blockchain. It's a hash graph. However, I, I also... Uh, appreciate what HBAR is doing for the uh, payments world. So I think ultimately uh, a basket of commodities, it can also count with precious metals, not only gold, uh, as you mentioned before, silver. And I have been doing some research as well, and maybe next week I, I can go a bit deep on that, which is also copper. I think also yes, copper is going to be important in the new economy. And it's extremely undervalued. I mean, if you look at the price of copper right now, I know it's extremely undervalued, just like silver and gold. Even though gold is hitting new all-time highs, I also think that gold is still undervalued. I think it's going to be out of reach for the majority of the population. And I see that we are above one hour now, Versan. So perhaps we can jump on final thoughts. And I think we're going to have to touch on smart contracts on the XRP Ledger next week, because otherwise we're going to extend ourselves too much. But I think that's also an important topic that I want to discuss for next week. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I put something up here for, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Are you seeing this? Oh, my apologies. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, I had something up here um, with the Treasury Department. Um, yes. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and read it. But yes, Japan's carry trade ended recently. For those who know what the carry trade is, it's basically allowing the U.S. to pretty much feed off them. Um, and that's just in short layman's terms that they've been screwing other nations all over the world. I mean, this is what the U.S. does, right? We, we, we fuck everybody. And <laughs> I'm sorry, it's coming to an end. But Japan's $400 billion, it's not $400 billion sold at once, but they, they are gradually selling up to $400 billion of U.S. debt. Um, that's going to eventually break the U.S. Treasury market. And so, yes, I saw somebody in the comments here that the uh, Ripple, or I'm sorry, XRP will be used some way, form, or fashion in the Treasury Department. Absolutely. And I think that's why they recently announced and introduced the real USD stablecoin, because this is all about, first of all, dismantling the central, the Federal Reserve, because the Federal Reserve, they've, they've made nothing but problems. And the problem now is that the, the situation hasn't been recognized, but they're going to cut interest rates soon to refinance the debt, which is a four year cycle they have to do. And they're gonna realize that the situation has gone so worse that it's worse than they could fix it. They can't fix the problem anymore. So they're gonna have to eventually give all power back to the treasury department. And I think that's why there's a lot of narratives from you know the other side of this conversation within the XRP community that the treasury department is really gonna be behind all of this. And who knows, it's very possible that even if the XRP, I'm sorry, the real USD is pegged to the dollar. I mean, we talked about Judy Shelton. We talked about Trump. Their narrative is actually taking us back to a gold standard, whether they want to acknowledge that or not. I think the groundwork is being laid out to eventually get us there. I think that's the only way he's going to be able to save the economy for himself. And I mean, who knows how this is going to play out, guys? There's just so many damn narratives. Um, as far as smart contracts, it, Every, everything is coming back to XRP. I put a good tweet about this as well, that it seems that whatever narrative is being put out in the crypto space, the crypto landscape, that it always seems to circle back to uh, the XRP ledger. That's not coincidence. Um, everything circles back because it's the very foundation of what is being built. And, uh, you know, in time, people are going to recognize this and, their argument, their nuance, again, is that, oh, the price isn't moving. Well, no shit, the price isn't moving. They're not going to move this thing until they're ready, until everything is 100% ready to go and adopt it. And in that video that um, Catherine, what I was showing you guys earlier, she, the full video, she actually talks about this, that they are testing things, they are integrating things, but they're not ready to go yet. So the final thing that she mentioned about getting this whole system online 
And by the way, the Bank of International says this in their documents along with the IMF, that this has to be implemented 100% and ready to go by November 22nd, 2025. Okay. So that's why my um, message has been consistent that at the end of 2025, I believe all of this is going to start to really play out. So we'll see how everything unfolds as the election approaches. And yes, flip the damn switch. I'm waiting for that moment too. I've been holding this technology for five years, but hey, I'm still in profit. I don't intend on selling my XRP. So the, the mission is for me, this is my strategy, guys. Earn more money, take that money and diversify into assets that will work for me as I'm waiting for all of this, okay? So diversify your portfolio. I've made profit in Caspa. I told you guys about this a long time ago. Um, and I encourage you to still hold the technology. It's very, uh, very powerful. It's, it has a place in all of this. And, you know, some ways I still don't understand. Um, the other technologies are out there. HBAR, they are doing incredible things. They have relationships with some of the largest financial institutions and military industrial complex. I talked about this with Lewis Jackson on his show. Um, so yeah, guys, there's just so much opportunity and there will be a bull market. Um, as they cut rates, they're going to have to print more money. They're going to pump that money into the system, fake liquidity in the dollar, devalue the currency. But yes, if you're in the right place at the right time, you will profit immensely. So um, there's a recipe to all of this, guys. Last thing I want to share with everyone, I'm sorry, uh, Edo, is this picture. I hope you guys can screenshot it. That would be great. Um, now, Simon Hunt was the first person in 2022 to tell me about this. So I do want to give him some credit. Uh, I hope you guys can see this, um, but it's it's for real. Like this is how the cycles play out, and I'm sure some of you guys have seen this. So as you can see, we're in 2023. Um, from 2019, that's when the repo market actually crashed. Then the pandemic came. Remember, the markets tanked significantly. And we're right now around in that turning point. So there's a strategy that you need to sell by 2026 in other assets. So if you have a diversified portfolio, you don't have to take profits in XRP. In, in fact, I encourage you never to sell your XRP. And I have my reasons for that, um, which I'll talk about next week. So a lot of information, guys, and I can go on forever. So yeah, sorry for hijacking the conversation. We, we appreciate to hear you, man. <laughs> and I think ultimately, and I got a lot of messages about this, and sometimes people don't have a large sum of capital and they're just trying to time the markets, you know, sell and actually buy at lower levels. And I think you are doing a mistake if you are wasting too much energy on that. I think the focus right now should be on bring extra cash. You need to find ways to bring extra liquidity in and that's tied to what Versailles was talking about. Because ultimately, if you only have $1,000 or $10,000 to invest, that will not grant you a diverse, diversified portfolio. So I think find new ways, be creative. We have smartphones at our hands. Use it with a purpose. Don't use it as a consumer. Use it as a creator. Or at least if you are consuming content, consume something that's going to be useful for you, not only endless scrolling on social media. So I think the focus right now, because as Versan, and I totally agree with him, I think end of 2025, we're going to see uh, large movements on the crypto world. I have some reasons to say that November 2025 is going to be an interesting month. And I think we have a couple of months where you can accumulate digital assets at discounted prices, especially digital assets that have real world utility and trust me they are a minority if you look for the entire crypto space i would argue that probably 0.1 percent of them have some sort of utility so focus on the ones that you can recognize important people on the border of directors you can recognize real partnerships real world use case uh, working closely with uh, policy makers as is the case for ripple that's why xrp is number one holding and I agree with Versailles, not taking profits on XRP. If you want to take profits, I recommend to have a small bug and you have a long-term bug. And forget about this thing of time in the markets, focus on bringing extra liquidity 
And I think that's the recipe to thrive on the next 24 months, 36 months, because this transformation is happening fast. You see that it's not going to take 10 years, not going to take even five years. I think things are about to speed up and everything is going to happen very quickly. As someone said, flip the switch. Yes, whoever is in charge for flip the switch, please hurry up because we XRP holders are ready. Uh, anything else you would like to add, Versan, or we can end this discussion yeah. here? Yeah, no, fi final thought. Uh, first of all, thank the whole audience. I mean, we almost, yeah, 2,500 close to that. Thank everybody out there for being so supportive and just being part of this community. You know, I, I truly have a lot of love for you guys. I do. And I, I love for you too, Edo, and everybody in this community. I'm truly grateful that uh, this is how we're going to win the battle, is community. The other important thing that I think people need to remember is that <clears throat> while all of this... Uh, information is coming out and we're all being bombarded it's very toxic it's very unhealthy and believe me i'm telling you from experience this is what i do for a living now as a research and i pretty much get paid to to know things and i love it but it's very toxic i have to distance myself those who follow me on instagram you see me posting a lot of pictures of plants and trees and uh, flowers because those are the things that make me happy in this world they really remind me of where i stand in all of this so um, I try so hard, and I encourage this, is to connect with your higher self, connect with God, connect uh, with uh, others that you love. And, you know, you're going to be shown a map pretty much to the human psyche of how everything really works in this world. And it offers you the journey um, into your own self-discovery, which is so important. We can't lose ourselves to technology because that really is what's happening here. And it gives you the keys to understanding pretty much the universal search of uh, for all meaning in this world and interconnectivity of all existence. It's just love, guys. It really is. So, um, you know, spend more time in nature. I encourage people to do that. You know, go sit at the park and hang out for 10, 20, 30 minutes, an hour, and just look at the sky, look at the trees. And I'm telling you guys, it is real rejuvenation. So I encourage this. Totally agree. And yeah, we have numbers are only trade, growing. We have more than 2,500 people. So I am sure if we keep going, we would easily reach 3,000 people. So I want to send a special thanks for the audience. Uh, without the audience, I think this show would not be here. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, and it would just be the two of us. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully next week we're going to be the four of us. I mean, uh, with Vandel as well as he couldn't join us today. So also my best regards to him. And yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to end here the stream, okay? Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone.